Good morning, all. You're very welcome. I thought summer as long as has arrived, so I put my summer regalia on, but also it's a celebration uh, of 50 years of this church being in operation. So it's a year of jubilee, and I'm going to tell you just very, very briefly about that. As I said, it's a year of jubilee, uh, 50 years on. If you look in the scriptures, jubilee is a very, very important year. It's a year for the Israelites to actually reflect on what God has been doing in their lives. It's an opportunity to link back with the Lord. It's an opportunity to find compassion that, that the community needs to uh, understand. And also justice and also caring for the, uh, the poor and the underprivileged. So it's an opportunity to reflect on all those issues. Now, Dundrum Methodist Church is 50 years on. And it's a challenge for us to maybe connect back with the living God and his word and his ways so that we can move forward in this 21st century world. Amen. 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 With that, I'm going to hand over to Stephen. He's eager Thank to you. go. This is indeed a special day. On the 2nd of September, 1973, a group of people met at 11 a.m. in the Miles Hall in Wesley College, led by the Reverend Brian Griffin. Brian gives his apologies. He had hoped to be here this morning, but sadly uh, their plans had to change um, during the week and they can't come. However, it, this was a bold attempt to plant a new church in an area of rapid development and growth. It was a visionary uh, step that was taken by the Methodist Church. This was the first church that the Methodist Church had planted since 1947 when they planted Drimna. After a few weeks meeting in the school, they found a new temporary home in Taney Hall and began planning to build new premises, these premises that we enjoy today. This building was opened in 1978, and five years ago, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of its opening, and we had a big splash then. Do you remember we invited all the past ministers and uh, everybody who had ever been associated with us, was giving an invitation. Um, but today, today, we thank God for His grace, His faithfulness, His goodness, and we honor its founding members, those who had the vision, who acted with obedience, and whose desire was to see the kingdom of God grow. I, um, I would very much like, uh, if, if those who were at the very first meeting, or indeed met at any time in Wesley College 50 years ago, would you please stand or just raise your hand? I, I, and if you... And if you joined that congregation at any time during that period in Taney, uh, we count you amongst those founder members. So are there any who joined the congregation while they were down at Taney? Just, just raise your hand. Quite a number of you. Those founding members who are still worshiping with us today who were present at Wesley College and um, oh, just, um, yes, um, uh, do whatever is appropriate if I, if I miss anybody out here. Um, Roy and Sherry uh, and their family, of course, Judy uh, is with us. Vera Montgomery, Robert and Vivian, uh, David and Anne, Iris, Joy Holland, George and Grace, Anne Brooks, Keith Henderson, who's with us today. Um, uh, have I missed anybody who was there from the very beginning? I, others joined in the, in the following years, but it's extraordinary that so many are still worshiping with us. So, for our call to worship, today is going to be a little bit like a harvest service. Um, I was thinking as I wrote the sermon that I should really have kept this for another month, but never mind. I'll have to think of another one. So, um, I'm going to talk about sowing and reaping as my theme today. It's not exactly a call to worship that I'm using, but these are the words of Jesus. He said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? 
It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. I think it's fair to say that over the years, many people have come and found shelter and encouragement and shade within the branches, within the spread of this fellowship and congregation. And we give thanks to God. Later, you'll hear some of the stories around the founding of this church community, this fellowship, and how it came to be. But the greatest story we can tell is the story of a God who loved us so much that He sent His only Son. And that Son, Jesus, taught us what is right. He showed us how to live. He invited us to eternal life. He gave His own life that we might experience His forgiveness and His eternity. And we are going to sing that wondrous story of the Christ who died for us in our first hymn.
Please be seated and let us bow our heads for a moment. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill this place today. Fill the hearts of all your faithful people. Kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess to God the things by which we have sinned. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. Your Spirit gives light, but we have preferred darkness. Your Spirit gives wisdom, but we have been foolish. Your Spirit gives power, but we have trusted in our own strength. So for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, forgive our sins, enable us by your Holy Spirit to serve you in joyful obedience to the glory of your name. There is now no condemnation for those who live in union with Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Thanks be to God. Faithful God, you promised, you fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending your Holy Spirit, opening the way of eternal life to all the human race. Keep us in the unity of your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We share the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to invite Rachel to come now and speak to the children and introduce our children's song for the month. Good morning, everyone. Now, can I invite all the children up to the front? Um, now, there definitely may not be seat space, but there's plenty of floor space. Come on up. Okay, so as we're kind of finished our summer period, before the summer, I don't know if you guys remember, um, and some of you guys may not have been here, but we did a song every month, okay? So we did a kid's song for every month, and it gave us that time to be able to kind of, you know, really know about what the song is and the fun actions that go with it, but more importantly, what that message of that song is trying to tell us and teach us about God, yeah? So today, as it's the first Sunday in September, it really nicely fit into what today is all about. Do you know what we're celebrating today in church? What are we celebrating? Anyone put up their hand and tell me. The 50th what? Well? Birthday. Birthday, yes. We're, and who doesn't love birthdays? It's so, so lovely to celebrate, but we're here celebrating. 50 years of this church, not this building, but this church, okay? Because this church is so much more than this building. So I don't know if you're listening to Stephen earlier, um, but he was saying that there was a small, small group of people that met in a room in the school that's over there, and they had this idea, and they had a vision, and they had in them the light of God, they wanted to shine that light out and they wanted to grow something that would be this today. Do you think on the very first meeting that they had, and they were a small group of people, you know, between, I don't know, no more than 10, right? Say there's no more than 10 people. And do you think that in their minds on that day, 50 years ago, they were like, this room is going to be filled. There's going to be a huge building. There's going to be, you know, so many families every Sunday coming to, you know, gather together as a community and celebrate and worship and praise God and give thanks. Maybe not, but they had a vision. They didn't know exactly it would look like this, but they had the belief 
that God was giving them a vision and that they wanted to spread God's love and use the light that is inside them to shine out, okay? And do you know what? Each one of you guys have a light inside you that is so, so special and so, so strong. And I just want you to be encouraged that no matter what age, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, that you have that inside you. And if you ever, you know, ask God for help, ask God for a vision or, you know, what he thinks he might want you to do and to use you, he will. And that's so, so special. And each one of you guys are so, so special. So our song for this month highlights about how special we are and how that light that we have inside of us that's God's light, is never going to go out. Because sometimes life is a little bit tricky, and sometimes things try to get in the way, and sometimes, you know, people might say things to us that are mean, or, you know, things might happen that are sad, but no matter what, that light does not shine any less bright. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite the band up and we're going to do our song. There's really fun, fun, fun actions. I would invite everyone to stand up and join in this song. Uh, if you know the actions, please join in. Please do sing out. And if not, look at me and I'll try to teach you the actions, okay? So it's called Let Your Light Shine. Yeah, you can help me, Carl. So it's called Let Your Light Shine because that's what it's all about. I'll invite you to stand. I'll invite you to stand.
Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, 
let them hear. Thank you so much. Um, you may be surprised to hear that Charleston Road Methodist Church had a preaching house in Dundrum as early as 1910. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> that was a bit hopeful. So th there's always been, the, there's always been the, the interest in Dundrum as, as, a, as a place to, to, to reach with the gospel. Um, conference in 1966 directed the Dublin district to purchase Balali House and its grounds as a basis for a new church plant. Sadly, for some reason, that never happened and the place became unavailable. But several years later, a steering group was gathered together, um, not uh, as uh, Rachel suggests that it was over here on the first day, but it happened before that. That 10 or so people, or no more than 10, was a, a steering group, and it comprised, amongst others, and we're not entirely sure if all of these were here from the beginning or joined a little later, Robin Roddy from uh, D Dublin Central Mission, David Davison, Robert Cochran, Roy Ritchie, Kingsley Prescott, Doug Bowie, Michael Kellett many of whom are still are here today, which is extraordinary and wonderful. And they started to plan and to pray um, for a new church plant. And they looked at purchasing, um, for example, Dundrum Castle, which would have been very handy for me, across the road. They, they looked at um, purchasing part of the pie factory, but there was stiff competition there. Um, but that was to no avail. And then um, without any venue having been decided, in 1973, in an act of faith, the Methodist Conference appointed the Reverend Brian Griffin to a church that didn't exist, not yet, and he was charged with bringing it into being. And he shared his vision around the district as he preached for, the, uh, uh, for a couple of months, and then he organized and gathered his team, helped by the steering group, and so it was that after just two months, on the 2nd of September, 1973, Dundrum Methodist Church met for the very first time in the Miles Hall in Wesley College. They met there for about a month before renting Taney Parish Parochial Hall for the grand sum of seven and six for the year. Where's Izzy? I think we're ripping off all our tenants. So we're <laughs> charging far too much. Um, and uh, there might be a photo to go with that, um, uh, of that first meeting. It's uh, just, uh, don't show the whole, um, but um, yes, there it is there. That was the one of the, just, just hold it there. There was a printed service sheet uh, on that day. They didn't have hymn books. And after the service, Deb, Des Webster was so moved that he offered to buy enough Methodist hymn books for everyone. Brian believes that there, there are about 30 families at that very first meeting, mostly gathered from local Methodist churches, Charleston Road, Dolphins Barn, Drimner, and Rathgar. And it rapidly grew as many local people joined. Very quickly, others who had no church connection began to be a part of this new church plant. Where the sower sowed, there was a harvest. Brian saw the principle of belonging, believing, and becoming at work as so many joined the fellowship and found faith and transformation. That early congregation, they had to buy secondhand chairs and put them out every week. Gladys Thompson brought a portable organ to play the hymns. They had to rent space in the court, courtroom to house the 180 or so children that were forming the Sunday school in those early days. 180 children. Um, <clears throat> as far as we know, the first child born to this congregation was, uh, was Jonathan Holland, born on the 4th of October, 1973. The first person baptized in this church was Miriam Strohair. Weekday meetings were in the manse. Bible studies went from house to house. Joan Basil used to pick up Jimmy Hadnett from Simpson's Hospital 
every Sunday morning to bring him to church. He's the only person who has a room named after him in these premises. And a significant part of that early congregation and its ministry was, its, was a ministry to interchurch families. Not an issue really today, but then it's not an easy thing to be in an interchurch marriage. And I heard that up to 12 couples would meet regularly in the manse with Brian and Irene for fellowship and mutual encouragement. And I understand, Keith, that you took that over eventually and uh, took leadership of that group. One of the early members I spoke to in the past week or two uh, said this, everyone was helping everyone. They visited each other's homes. That's why it grew so much. Another summarized those early years quite simply as a movement of the Spirit. A lot of people, he said, were moved by that. And so we see in what is here today and in the history of this church, we see the hand of God at work. We see His footsteps in the sand. I'm going to ask um, Judy to come and share some of her... Judy was just a very small child in those early meetings. And so we're going to hear a little bit of her perspective as she grew up within this fellowship. Later, as we share coffee together, there'll be an open mic and perhaps some of the others may like to share a story or two. Judy, thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, I feel a bit strange standing here today as I don't feel old enough <laughs> at all to be worshipping in this congregation for 50 years. It is amazing. I just, I don't know, this middle age thing is mad, but I really don't feel. So even though, so you also have to excuse um, some of the things I'm going to repeat that Stephen and has said, but I just wanted to really just talk about what I think about this church. As I was only six at this time, I have few memories of the first Sunday in Wesley College. I can imagine, though, my excitement going to a new church in the school where my dad taught in. There was no pews, just chairs arranged in a semicircle. Brian and his wife Irene leading the service, a new community of people meeting to worship God, taking a step of faith. The next three services were held in Wesley, but as boarders who were attending had to leave the grounds of Wesley to attend worship, the church had to move. But again, God had a plan. Reverend Brian Griffin's uncle worshipped in Taney Parish, and he asked if the Methodists could use their church hall. So he moved to Eglinton Terrace, which is beside the guard station in Dundrum. Just as an aside, the church is now Hope Baptist Church. Or the hall is now Hope Baptist Church, and God's work continues again in this hall. The congregation gathered in the hall to worship each Sunday. The music was provided by a portable organ, which, when played, slid along the floor. <laughs> the church compiled a praise book of new songs way before mission praise. There was a large Sunday school, and permission was given to use the courthouse for the youth work, which was very weird, but great fun. The new church grew as many families joined. We only had the hall for Sunday, so homes were used for weekly activities, which included Bible studies, MWNCE, Christian Endeavor, which was held in my parents' house where up to 50 kids used to meet. Much of what happened then continues today. <clears throat> in 1978, the congregation moved to worship in the present building, and more people have joined, and God has continued to lead. Some of my happiest times have been in Dundra Methodist, receiving great support as I've gone through the many stages of my life. This love and support was shown in abundance when Rob and I got married in this church today, 29 years ago, and continues as we brought our own family here. A lot of changes have happened since that first service, but in, this, in the midst of this, it is good to remember as a church that there's one thing that never changes, and that is Jesus Christ. He was in the past, exactly who is in the present, and precisely who will be forever. As Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The Greek word for same is unchangeable. 
So the Jesus Christ we worship here today, as the first congregation did 50 years ago, is unchangeable. Let us thank God for the people, as I said earlier, some who still worship here with us, that they took the step of faith and God honoured it and Dundrum Methodist Church was born. Thank you. Judy, thank you so much for, for sharing uh, your, your story and, um, and speaking in, in a way for all of those who were there in those early days. I want to take just a one or two moments just to think, well, what does this mean for us today? Why are we celebrating something that happened 50 years ago? And I want to use a, an analogy, a farming analogy. So I say it's going to be like a harvest service. I don't know, have you ever been for a walk up to talk, tick knock uh, in recent, uh, recent months? Big changes are taking place in tick knock. And um, what they are doing is they are seeking, that what they observed was that oh, the hills are, are covered with, with uh, pine trees that are not native to Ireland. And they have started a project to replace many of those trees with indigenous forest, to return it to the way it was in prehistoric times. And that began with a vision. And the vision was to, to see, it not in their own day, not in their own children's day, but in their grandchildren's day, to see a, a vision of, of a whole new forested area where it was just like pristine forest. Then they had, to, they had to gather support for that as part of the vision and they had to prepare the ground. And preparing the ground here has been very difficult, cutting down trees and opening up the ground. And then comes the planting of the trees. These are two ladies, I don't know their names, from Quilcher. And they're involved in the planting process. They're planting oaks. And then, of course, comes the reaping of the harvest, which they may never see in its fullness. We may never. But over the next 20 years, we will see the forest grow and grow and grow. And when you plant something, it grows. We, we don't control that. We can help it. We can encourage it. But the growth comes from within. It becomes it is part of the way it's made, and, and other things grow with it. What's interesting is that they are planting trees, but grasses and shrubs and bushes and flowers, they propagate themselves and grow around the trees. And then the insects and the bugs and the plant and, and, and the, the, the voles and the mice and the badgers and the deer and the birds, they come and they begin to make their home in this place. And so you can see as we look at the reforestation of, of the Dublin mountains, we can see how the same principles apply as God gives a vision to a people to plant a church. Those 30 families were deliberately planted into the ground in this place. But they could not have imagined the many, many others who came and planted themselves in the shelter and the shadow of those trees. And they began to grow and take on a life of their own. And before very long, that original fellowship became unrecognizable because so many new faces were there. But the same process followed. There was a vision for something new that God had planted in the hearts and minds of that small group of people. They gathered support. They prepared the ground. They planted the seed. And today, we are the harvest. And we are reaping the harvest. But now the process begins all over again because every season is a season of planting. Every season is a season of growing within God's church. And so, Paul said, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God 
who makes things grow. The one who plants, the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are fellow workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. This church has made a good start. What can we become by God's grace? Where can we go in His strength? Are we still a movement of His Spirit? Are we still walking in His strength? Do we keep seeking His renewal from above, keep seeking the lost, keep befriending the lonely, keep feeding the hungry? Will we keep sowing the seed so that generations that follow us will take shelter in its branches? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our prayer must be one of thankfulness. You have shown yourself in so many ways and at so many times and to so many people that you are faithful and good, that your ways prevail, that your life is enriching and fulfilling. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you moved in the hearts of a few people that planted a seed that has grown and continues to grow. Lord, we pray that as we continue in this heritage, as we continue to look to the future and to the next generation and the generation after that, Lord, we pray that you will continually inspire us, fill our hearts with a desire to serve you and to serve your kingdom. Lord, whether our, our role in this is to be one who, who sows or one who waters or one who reaps the harvest, may we do so faithfully and may we give you all the glory. Father, in our prayers, we just want to remember the world around us where there are so many needs. We remember places, Lord, devastated by natural disaster or by war or conflict. We pray for those who are struggling with poverty or sickness. We pray for homes where relationships are damaged or broken. We pray, O oh God, that you will bring your provision, your healing, your wholeness, your peace. And Father, we pray for our Leaving Cert students, Lord, who have received their offers in this past week and will have a better idea what next year holds for them. Lord, whatever that path has proved to be, may they walk it with enthusiasm, may they walk it in your strength. And Lord, may you fulfill in them your purpose and your plan. Lord, we ask all these prayers in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We are going to be sharing communion together as a church community, and, and obviously this will take a little time. And so please do bear with us. We are going to run a little bit over this morning, but we are going to feed you well afterwards. Um, but if you do need to leave at any time, please don't, don't uh, feel constrained. Feel free to to go as, as and when you wish. We're going to sing um, just three verses of our next hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross on Which the Prince of Glory Died.
as we share communion today, um, we're going to follow the, the Church of Ireland way of doing things just for a change. And so when the time comes to receive communion, I'm going to, as you're directed by the stewards, I'm going to invite you to, to walk forwards down the aisle. A whole row will come at once down, down the aisle. There will be a serving station on your side. You'll receive the, the bread and the wine and return back in the other side of your row. I hope that's clear. The directors, the, the directors, the stewards will direct you. But let us pause for a moment in quietness and stillness as we seek the Lord. Lord, it is good to be here. It is good to be worshiping in your presence. It is good to know that you are with us always to the end of the age. And that promise is not dependent, Lord, on how we feel or what we have done or where we are going, but upon your simple promise that you love us and you remain with us. to all who put their trust in you. We remember in this sacrament that our Lord Jesus Christ on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of all his mighty acts, we offer you these gifts and with them ourselves, O God, as a holy and living sacrifice. You send forth your spirit. You bind us in your love. You renew the face of the earth. Pour out your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him and with one another in mission to all the world and bring us with the whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all blessing and honor and glory belong to you. Amen. So let us then draw near with faith and let us receive this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ and feed on the Lamb of God, the bread of life, with reverence and with faith. Let us once again be still in the presence of God, in quietness and rest is our strength. Be still and know that I am God. God of all power, may the boldness of your Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your Spirit lead us, and may the gifts of your Spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. The church is built on just one foundation, the foundation of Jesus Christ our Lord. In our final hymn, one of the, the great um, anthems and hymns of the church is what we're going to close with today. Let us stand to sing.
church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to proclaim the word and works of God. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit re remain with you always. Let us go out into the world in the power of the Spirit to fulfill our high calling as servants of Christ. And may we bless each other with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.